I have established a bit of a reputation for myself now <laughs> as the guy, the YouTuber who doesn't mind shooting with affordable optics. Um, and I keep having people send me more, which that's totally fine. That's cool. I don't mind. I, I honestly don't think you have to have precision optics for most photography that 90% of you probably do. And certainly that I do most of the work that I do. It we, Honestly, we don't need um, crazy high density uh, megapixels with crazy resolution power, resolving power, whatever, with these lenses. Even though I'm a fan of having that option, you don't have to have it. For a lot of what I shoot, I shoot manually anyway, manual focus. Um, I don't rely on the autofocus. And I, I think I can count on one hand the number of more affordable lenses that I've tried these days that I think I, I just couldn't use this lens. It's just too you know, either cheap or the or the image quality was too low. There's there's really, most of them are pretty dang good these days. And that's awesome. That means that you can get an expensive camera, but a really affordable lens and get in the game and immediately um, be able to produce high quality photos, at least high enough that no one would ever even know the difference, including you. Um, and, Again, depending on the type of photography you do. But I'm guessing most of you Fuji X photographers, uh, you're not shooting the type of, of photos that require that sort of, you know, high resolution. You're doing probably a lot of like documentary or um, life kind of with there's motion or movement and, and you're not on a tripod. Chances are you don't need you don't need that level of quality. So. So yeah, what do we have here? Uh, honestly, I don't know. I, I tell these people who reach out, are you willing to look at these <laughs> lenses? And I always just say, sure. Um, and kind of established a pattern where every once in a while I head out on a photo adventure and whatever anybody sent me is what I end up taking. And so I just collected them. I've ha I have three more lenses sent to me, um, different brands, and I'm gonna take these out and use them. Uh, on a little adventure I'm doing. I'm gonna go out, do an overnighter, typical to uh, me when I, when I have an opportunity to do a quick photo trip. Uh, I do two things, I do photography and mountain biking. And I think I've got one or two of my boys willing to come with me this time. I'm not sure, they're deciding whether they like their dad or their friends more at this point <laughs> uh, for the weekend. So, but yeah, these are the three lenses I have. I don't remember what they are, so let's open them and tell you what they are. This lens, I haven't heard a lot about, but I know that it exists. And this, idea, I think there's a couple of lenses like this where it's most, it's supposed to be sort of like a lens cap. Um, so, uh, you know, so small that it's almost like having just a lens cap on your camera that's also a lens. This is a 10 millimeter F8 pancake fisheye from Pergear. Um, Wow, that is tiny. It's got a very interesting focus throw. This little kind of lever, interesting. I'm guessing most of the time, you know, you could probably set this to infinity and just forget it, honestly, unless you're really close. But I don't know how close this focuses. All of this we will discover together. So that's the first lens. Second lens, let's go to the next widest. What do we have here? The 35 millimeter um, 0.95 from TT Artisans. I'm sorry, it's not, <laughs> I get that mixed up. I apologize. I'm sure TT Artisans and Seven Artisans are both going to be upset with me by the end because I'm featuring one of each of their lenses and getting them mixed up. <laughs> Guys, change your name, one of you. Um, Seven Artisans. Uh, 35 millimeter, 0.95, if I can get it open. All right. I know I've tried TT Art 7 Artisans lenses and TT Artisans before, but I haven't tried these two. Cool. Nice little friction um, lens cap. Yeah, all right. As per most of these more affordable lenses, there it has a clickless aperture, which is not my favorite thing in the world, but you know, whatevsies, it's fine. If it saves you some money, then okay. But it feels pretty nice, actually. Very impressive. Um, 
nice and he hefty. And I love the distance scale. That's really easy to follow. In fact, man, this is this is probably better than 90% of the lenses that I've tried, cheap or otherwise. Um, that's really cool and very useful for a manual focus lens. So well done, Seven Artisans, with your easy to read um, distance scale there. That's really cool. Um, too bad it's not clicked, but you know, can't have everything in life. But looks good, looks promising. Ooh, I like that. It's kind of got this gunmetal black um, whatever mount rather than the shiny chrome that you normally have. Cool. That's awesome. Looking forward to giving that a shot, a try. Let's open our last lens here. This is the 50 millimeter 1.2 TT Artisans lens. And I'm not a fan of this unscrewable lens cap. I prefer it to be kind of frictiony like the seven artisans, but I don't, I don't know. I don't, on the other hand, that's very nice. Clicked aperture. Very pleasant clicks there to this lens. And interesting, these two little tabs to help with you to kind of grip the manual focus. I've, I've never seen a design like that before. So that's, that's interesting. I'm not sure if they have copied anyone with that approach, if there's a Leica lens that does that. I know a lot of times these lens manufacturers, these manual focus lens manufacturers will look to, you know, the Leica um, optics for, um, to kind of, follow copy <laughs> but in this case i've never seen that and that's interesting the lettering is very much leica inspired um on the front and then it does also have a distance scale not as impressive as our friends over at the seven artists inside of things but still functional and feels nice and damped so there I go comparing them. They're actually about the same size or heft, not size. Size is bigger over here, but hmm, actually they're kind of, I know we're not comparing these two lenses per se because they're different focal lengths, but they actually feel about the same weight and they're about the same height and size, which is surprising because this is a uh, you know, 0.95, this is 1.2, but is that, is it really? That's the one thing about it. Will it really allow that much light in? Um, that should be tested. I'm not sure if I have time to test that or if I will test that, but I'm always a little skeptical. Does it really let as much light in as they say that it does? Um, I don't know. And maybe I don't care. So those are the three lenses. I really love being forced to, uh, in, in sort of an arbitrary way, having these focal lengths, these apertures uh, forced on me uh, to, to kind of stretch me. It forces me out of my comfort zone. Um, I see things uh, at different focal lengths and trying to get you know, numerous photos for each lens to give you guys examples. Um, I, love, I love that sort of uh, exercise and so, yeah, we're gonna head out, do some small town photography, hit some mountain biking trails. I'll probably even bring these on the trails to see if I can get some handheld uh, landscape shots from the back of a bike, see how that goes. Come along for the journey with me. Let's go.
welcome to Caliente, Nevada, where we spent the night at the luxurious Shady Motel. Thought that was a, a very fitting name, Shady. Shady Motel for some shady people, me and my boys. Anyway, um, yesterday I didn't have a chance to record much on the go because we were chasing the light. There was a, a huge cloud bank headed towards the sun, so we were racing to get to those locations that we were excited about photographing before we got to Caliente. So I didn't film much, um, but you know, one place I was really excited to shoot was no longer interesting. It, uh, you know, one of the reasons I like to photograph rural decay is because it's not going to be around. It's decaying. It's going away. And sometimes it just decays naturally, but other times, and more often than not, humans take it down. And that's what happened to one of my absolute favorite locations to photograph. Um, some of you will recognize this place from earlier episodes. It's now been renovated and and to me it was really sad to see it kind of go away from that that state that it was in that I was excited about. So anyway, that was a little bit of a it tugged on my heartstrings a bit. It made me a little bit sad to see that location kind of um, be redone or taken away from its naturally decaying state. Um, I understand why people need to do that. Obviously, it's it's what humans do, but it renewed that sense of urgency for me to continue to photograph and document these locations that aren't going to be around forever. Um, so we'll do some more of that today. Today we're going to take our time a little bit more, get some more photography, do some mountain biking. So, yeah. Lately, my obsession with rural landscapes has, has fixated on a certain type of photography or style, I guess, um, where I kind of like, I, I do like taking photos uh, straight on of buildings. Um, that's more of a pure documentary uh, perspective. But lately I've been really loving getting, uh, including some of the corner or the the sides of buildings as well with a really long lens uh, anything 75 millimeter full frame um, equivalent or larger so for me i tend to be drawn to that that 50 millimeter lens because of what it does to buildings when i shoot from this angle it makes it sort of unfold almost to where the edge of the building looks like it's been folded out sort of in a Picasso way, right? Where where things unfold or the compression brings them around. I really love that style of um, photography. So I'm finding myself being drawn to those sorts of shots and that lens, but I really am trying to use that 35 millimeter and that 10 millimeter fisheye as well to give you guys examples of both. But having a lot of fun in this little small town, uh, lots of really beautiful shots. I hope we can be here long enough to see the sun kind of face from one side of the town to the other because there's a lot on this side of the town, the, uh, um, the east side, that's beautiful, including an old railroad, railroad station, but uh, right now it's in the shade. So 
we'll see how I mean, there's there's not a ton I mean there's a few mountain bike trails that we can spend our time on but I'm hoping I can <laughs> stall the boys long enough throw some food at them throw some video games at them long enough to where we can get some shots um, facing the uh, the east as well In the last video I did where I had great few lenses in small town America, I found a couch um, in the middle of this kind of uh, desolate, desolate scene. And it, it remains one of my favorite photos. I took that on a fisheye. And I'm so happy I just found another uh, piece of furniture, uh, an armchair in the middle of, again, uh, some rotting stuff behind it. So maybe I can start making a series and I have a fisheye to catch capture it on so I feel fortunate to have all of those things come together once again Though this shot may not be quite as cool as the last one. I still think it's pretty cool. It is not gonna work. On this trip, my boys didn't seem to mind getting their portraits taken. This is highly unusual behavior for them, and I took advantage of that to see what these lenses are capable of for portraits. I shot these wide open, and I have to say I was quite pleased. Nice fall off and bokeh for both lenses. The only tricky thing with manual focus lenses shot wide open like this is nailing focus on the eye. To do this, I shot in continuous high and slightly rolled focus from in front of and then behind the eye. That way I was sure to come away with at least some keepers. I also took a second to briefly test the sharpness of these lenses. As expected, neither the 7 Artisans 35 nor the TT Artisans 50 were particularly sharp when shot both wide open and then also with apertures closed down fully. But shot at f4, both were plenty sharp for my needs when coupled with that stabilized X-T4 sensor. However, as you probably noticed, depending on if you're watching this video in 4K or not, that per gear 10mm fixed f8 aperture lens is extremely soft. I'm sad about that because I really liked being able to shove that small lens in the X-T4 in my mountain biking bag and be able to pull it out for shots on the trails, but it's just not quite sharp enough for me to be able to use it that way. Well, we had a lot of fun in Caliente. We didn't stay long enough for that sun to shift to the other side of the town, but that just gives me an excuse to come back later, so that's totally fine. But we've got some great photography. We had some real, real good times mountain biking. It was a little chilly, so we didn't bike as much as we thought we would. Uh, so we're gonna head out, find somewhere to have lunch on the way home. But there's still one thing I, I still wanna photograph before we're done that I haven't been able to do yet, and that's kind of to test that close focus capability of these lenses. We did a lot of fire away shots, we did some portraiture, but none of those detail shots that I, I really want to get, there just wasn't anything uh, that lent itself to that in that town that we could get close to. So hopefully we find something on the way home, and that'll be the last thing we do before this video is done. But for now, time to find some food. I found a little blip of a town on the way home called Modena. I'm gonna find some detail shots, some textures, see how close we can focus with these lenses, see how well they do up close, and then I think, I think we're gonna call it quits. Right, my friends we are done it's been a wonderful trip I am so lucky that I've got two boys that are still willing to 
traips about the uh, the the country uh, for hours looking for what most kids would probably think is pretty boring um, shots uh, photography in general I'm grateful that they they have a little bit of interest in it they both don't mind it accompanying me on these photo journeys and to do some mountain biking I don't know how long that will last um, but I have to tell you it's it's fulfilling I, I feel like three of my absolute favorite things in the world I was able to do this weekend photography mountain biking and spending time with two of my kids uh, I can't think of any better way to spend time. I feel fulfilled, absolutely fulfilled. And the icing on the cake is that I know that I got a lot of photos that I'm very, very happy with. Um, I could spend more time, the place where I'm at, the area that I live, I could spend a lot of time doing landscape photography and really kind of kill it, I think. Um, that's what most people want to see. I know I would get more YouTube views, more interest in my photography if I went to these epic landscape locations more often, or even maybe some of those that are less known. There's so many great landscape opportunities, but that's not what I find fulfilling. It's, it's this stuff. I just, I just find it absolutely fulfilling. I feel fulfilled, I feel good. This has been great. Thank you for coming along on yet another photo adventure. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I hope that you also, wherever you are in the world, are able to find fulfillment in the photography that you do. Either way, remember to do some good with your cameras and we'll talk to you again real soon.